did it. I mean, whoop, there we go. And there was sound. Let's so stand up. It's Merry Christmas. Y'all say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy birthday, Jesus. Happy birthday, Jesus. All right. Y'all are sounding good. Y'all are sounding good in spite of yourself. Ready? These are the two most important hours of my week. Help me to cherish them. I'm here today to worship, not to be entertained. I'm singing to an audience of one. Accept my worship, O oh Lord. Amen. Let's go ahead and sing a little bit. Ready? Let's find out where we at. Silent night. I got it here somewhere. Hold on, hold on. Well, I had it here. Let's just go ahead and play it. I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll play it by here. I had it right in my hand. There it is. I had it right in my hand. Right next to my stream means sorry, right next to my heart. Ready? Ready? So Look, look, Doug and his wingman, look. 
How you doing, bro? We're good. All right, ready? Here we go. Joy to the world.
I'll serve that Jesus on in a PowerPoint. Ready? Thanks 
will come back to peace. Um, I had another little, it's in my last name. So, uh, I don't know about the rest of you, but the, it's not recognizing my finger, man, this morning. <laughs> We don't either, say we're right. It's frozen. <laughs> uh -oh. talking about the rest of you, but I don't recognize it either. <laughs> but <laughs> this is a little short one, too. This is what I'm going to end with. I believe churches are meant for praising God, but so are 2 a.m. car rides and showers and coffee shops and the gym and conversations with friends and strangers. Don't let a building confine your faith. Because we will never change the world by just going to church. We need to be the church. Amen. 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 Sweet little story. Santa Claus was at the mall and he was very surprised when a young lady about 20 years old walked up and sat on his lap. Santa didn't use to take requests from adults, but she smiled very nicely at him. So he said, okay, you can ask something, but it has to be for someone other than yourself. So what do you want for Christmas? She said, something for my mother. Something for your mother? Well, that's very thoughtful of you, smiled Santa. Why do you want me to bring her without blinking her eyes? She said, a son-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> okay. New book. That was a good one. <clears throat> right, how about this one? Knock, knock. Who's there? Honda. Honda who? On the first day of Christmas, my true love sent to me. <laughs> okay, now we're going downhill again. Yeah. <laughs> should have stayed, stayed with the first, we'd have been all right. Yeah. You know how we get corny jokes for Christmas sometimes? Everybody stand, we're going to read the word, and then we're going to um, do it. We'll be, be brief. Which does not mean short, it just means brief, okay? Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. If you've got your Bible, you can look at it. I've got it written down here, so I don't have to pull the Bible out. But it's a very powerful, powerful scripture. We've been hearing it all over the place. We've heard it some today. We've been hearing it all through the Advent season. And I, you can hardly hear about Christmas without hearing about this scripture. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace on the throne of David and over, and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word, God, because 700 years before Jesus was born, you told this. And then 700 years later, he was born. Now, 2,000 years past, we look back and see that you knew exactly what was coming and you knew what we needed. And even in these turbulent times, we know, God, that you bring a stable influence. And we thank you for that. I ask you right now, Lord, to minister to us and to us, Father. And Lord, help us re realize and remember that the whole reason that we're here is because of the sacrifice of your son. The first sacrifice was coming to earth. The second sacrifice was giving of himself. And we thank you for that. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, amen. amen. You can be seated for a few minutes. I promise you I'll try to uh, not wear, wear you out. <clears throat> It's very funny. Yesterday, uh, somebody was outside talking to me. It was so cold. And Linda saw me out there. She said, you're out there quite a while, weren't you? I said, yes. And she said, what happened? I said, she kept, she, she didn't stop. I stopped listening before she stopped talking. <laughs> and about a few minutes later, I started talking to Linda. And Linda looked, had a look in her face. And I said, what's going on? She said, well, I'll stop listening long before you stop talking. <laughs> So don't stop listening before I stop talking. All right? Okay. Now, we've been talking about this. I'll be, I'll be, I said I'll be brief. I'm going to try my best. We talk about the problem this day is unrest. There's so much unrest in this, in this global economy. There's, uh, we have war. We have threats of war, jobs, gas. Uh, go to the grocery store and try to buy something. Wow. 
you know, and, and, and so we all this stuff going on, and the answer is rest. And God's rest is not a cessation of, of, of problems, but it is relief in the midst of it. So here it is, and, and this is this scripture. I'll be brief. This is what we did last week. Rest, we got to rest in his promise. Rest. Don't say rest. Rest. Yeah. rest in his promise. The child is born to us. That's the cradle. That's his humanity and his humility. A son will be given. That's the cross. That's his deity and his destiny. And the government will rest upon his shoulders. That's his crown. He's going to be the power from here on out. They mean he's the power now. Although the world thinks they've got a son, and the devil thinks he's got a son. The Bible says the devil is the god of this world, but it's only a temporary possession because he's got a lease, and his lease is running out. Somebody say, say, his lease is running out. Say it. His lease is running out. So first, rest is powerful. Power. Then are his promise. Then it says, you should be called wonderful. Think about this now. I want you to rest in his wonder. That word wonder means to be marvelous, extraordinary, to be beyond one's power to comprehend. He's so awesome. It's amazing what he does. So rest in his wonder. Then it says, call him counselor. We can rest in his, we his wisdom. You see, counselor means to advise, to consult, to give counsel, to help somebody find purpose, or to help devise a plan. So at first, his role as leader and guiding force in our lives, he is our advisor, our director. He's got perfect wisdom. Whatever he tells you, he can back up. He's our advocate. He's our defender. So he's got powerful wisdom. Again, he can back us up. I think about last night. On the way to my dad's house, we were running late. On the way to my dad's house, Linda's uh, car, the light popped on and says, you need to check the air in your tires. And so I just felt because it's so cold outside, it'll be okay. It's just a normal thing. Because I did the same thing the day before. <clears throat> so we went to Dad's, and I said, we'll stop back at Sheets, and I'll go ahead and check the tires. So while we were at Sheets, we had to wait for somebody in front of us. And we noticed a truck. And in this truck was an old man. And the old man came out of his truck wearing shorts. And he walked to the back of his truck and we crawled back in his truck. Linda said, that doesn't look good. I said, no, it doesn't. I got my air in the tires. And Linda said, can we check on him? I said, sure. So we pulled up beside him. I didn't see him. I said, I'll go talk to him. So I went out of the car, went and knocked on the window. And he was laying down in his truck. Now, we were on the way to do something else. But this is God and his being wonderful. And being the great counselor, our advocate, and our advisor. And I won't go into it, I won't say the man's name. But the man told me, I said, Are you okay? He said, I'm fine. And he started rolling his window back up. I said, No, 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 roll the window back down. I said, You don't look like that. And he said, Well, he said, At the moment I'm living out of a truck. And he jumped into him, began to tell him about his you know, divorce and other things, and living out of his truck. And, and I said, uh, I would be glad if somebody took his clothes. I said, I'd be glad to go buy you some pants, uh, some sweatpants. He said, no. He says, I don't need anything. Thank you. He started rolling his window back. I said, no, roll it back down. And I said, do you realize how cold it is out here? And he says, I'm in my truck. And I said, let me go get you some pants. He said, I don't need any. My truck's warm. And I said, well, have you eaten? He said, well, I've eaten a little bit. And I said, well, what do you want to eat right here? There's a restaurant in there. Tell me what you want. And he looked at me. And he said, why are you doing this? And I said, to let you know that Jesus loves you. And although you feel like you're being forgotten by your family and forgotten by everybody else and you're out here, God had not forgot about you. I said, let's go in and get something to eat. If you want to get you any clothes, let's go in and get something to eat. And he finally said, then he started crying. And he said, I know who you are. I said, who am I? He said, you're God's angel. Now we were already ready to go somewhere else. To do something entirely different. But now we're out here. 
and we go inside, we buy them food, buy them something to last throughout the night. And he says, I'm fine, I'm fine. And I said, no, you're not fine. He said, please, I'll be all right. So then later we called and got him a shelter. And when I rode by this morning, his truck was gone, so we went in that shelter last night. But it's amazing how wonderful God is because he had that man at the same time. We're getting the hair. If we weren't getting hair in my tire, I would have never stopped. I never, never even drove by there. And if the guy had been in front of me blocking us to get his hair, we would have never saw that guy get out of his truck. So our God is wonderful. You can rest in his wonder. You can rest in his wisdom. And on the way out, he grabbed me and hugged me. And he says, I, now I, I do know God loves me. God's awesome. No, no, no medals on me. I, I didn't do anything other than talk to him. God did it. Amen. I mean, it's all God. But I, I thank God for what he does. This says, mighty God. You can rest in his power. That word God is El, which means strength and might. It means, especially the Almighty, Emmanuel. When he was born, said he, we called Emmanuel, God with us. El is part of that Emmanuel. And mighty is El Gibor, which literally means God's, hey, listen, means hero. Hero. God was that man's hero last night. Amen? Amen. I was just a little old poem. God was powerful and God showed his strength. God showed off. He showed up and showed off. Everlasting Father rest in his person. The word Father, of course, means Father. But it's something that a Father does for us. Every good Father. And even if they're not a good Father, they got to understand that they're doing this. And so it's important that you're a good Father. Because this is what a Father does. Every Father on this earth, if you've ever fathered a child, this is what you do. Believe it or not. And so it's very important that you understand that so you can be like our God. First, the Father gives the, gives the person identity. So say person. Say person. Person. Secondly, he gives them protection. protection. Next, he gives them provision. provision. Then he gives them a path. He gives them guidance. You know, my daddy used to think about it. You know, he said, don't go out there and do that, son. And I come back, I, I did it. I'm out here going, oh. And Dad showed me so much wisdom and compassion. He said, hurt, dude. <laughs> <laughs> then he would laugh. And I do the same thing with my boys. This is really kind of funny. Hurt, dude. And then potential. Your father leaves you a legacy. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about your insights, how you handle things, and how you look at things. Everlasting points to his existence and his excellence. And then finally, and here's where I'm getting ready to do the communion. He's the Prince of Peace. We rest in his promise. We rest in his wonder. We rest in his wisdom. We rest in his power. We rest in his person. And we rest in his promise. That word peace means shalom. Shalom does not mean a state of being where there's no conflict. Shalom is very seldom, if ever, controlled by circumstances. Shalom means total well-being. It means to be totally, listen, well-being mentally, physically, and spiritually. When Jews met each other on the street, they would say shalom. They were saying that God bless you mentally, physically, and spiritually. So, peace, and he's the prince, which means to have domination. And so, he is the self-appointed prince of peace. He takes responsibility. So, so let me tell you about God, God's peace. Here's God's peace. You say, I, can't, I don't feel his peace. Let me just explain God's peace a little bit this. First, and I'm not going to go all the scriptures, but if you want them, I'll give them to you later. First, there's the peace with God. The peace with God deals with our forgiveness from God and our reconciliation. Then there's the peace of God, which deals with his presence and his companionship. It's our responsibility first. It's our responsibility to accept the peace with God. It's our responsibility to seek the peace of God. Then there's peace with, through God, which deals with earthly relationships. It's our responsibility to pursue it. And there's the peace eternal of God that deals with His promise. It's our responsibility to expect it. Now, if you'll notice over here, we got the cross right behind the stable. 
that there's a reason for that. I think it was last year, I actually did the parallels between the manger and the cross, and they were exact parallels. But I just want to talk to you for a minute and go ahead and get your communion cup out. I want to talk to you right now for just a minute on from the stable to the table. From the stable to the table. As we get ready for communion today on Christmas, I want to remind all of you that Christ was born to die. I can't think of anybody else that was born to die. They were born to live. Christ was born to die. Lying in that manger in the stable of Bethlehem was the first gift of Christmas wrapped in swaddling clothes. Over the next 33 years, much would happen. Leading from the stable to the table for which the Last Supper was served. Why did he come as a child and live 33 years before he started his ministry? Well, number one, in order for him, it says he was tempted in all points like we are, yet without sin. In order for him to experience that, or to be able to say that, he had to experience it. People think that Jesus never had childhood diseases. He never messed up a diaper. or was never a dirty diaper. No, he did everything that we did. It was faced with every challenge that we were faced through this 33 years, including his dad died at a young age, so he became the head of the home. He took the responsibility of a father, and he took care of his family. And in order for a man to serve as priest, he had to be at least 33 years old. That's when he was considered, or 30 years old, when he considered to be old enough to be a priest, uh, mature. And so 33 years, leading, so, so he experienced everything as we are as a man. Now, on the front of the communion table are found the words, this do remember us of me. Whenever we do communion, I want you to remember the difference Christ made, past, present, and future. Christmas past, remember the Lord's death. Bethlehem was Emmanuel, God for us. Calvary was God, or was God with us. Calvary was God for us. Remember Christmas past, the Lord's death. Remember Christmas present. Remember the Lord's steps, and we need to walk in his steps. In Christmas future, remember his soon return. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Let's, let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, that all that I know, Lord, we know that you were not born on December 25th. It's the day set aside by the world to celebrate your birth. And I thank you for your birth. I thank you that you loved us so much. That you'd come down in the form of a child and live a life so you would know what we were going through. As man and as God, you provided the sinless sacrifice. I ask you right now, Lord, to help us, God. If there's any attitudes or actions within us that you're not, you do not like, that's not like you. I ask you right now, Lord, to remove it. Show it to us and remove it. And we thank you for it right now as we take communion. And God, help us to realize that we don't have to be perfect to take communion. We don't have to be sinless to take communion. Because you'll never be perfect and you'll never be sinless until you get to heaven. This is a remembrance of what he's done for us. It's not about us. Communion is not about us. It's about you. And I thank you for it, God. Matter of fact, the man that wrote... The scripture that we read all the time said he was the chief of all sinners. He was the center of sinners. Yet he talked about communion in Corinthians. We thank you, Lord. Everybody stand. Open up the top place. Get to your piece of styrofoam there. The Bible said on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. And he blessed it and said, take heed, this is my body. This do in remembrance of me. Or remember, remember what I'm getting ready to do, what I was telling his disciples. And listen to us, says, remember what I did for you. It's not about us, it's about him. Remember what I did for you. Go ahead and eat.
Now, it's been slipped down again. Not your lip, but lip on the cup. And pull up. Get to the juice. Bible said on the same night that he took the cup and he held it up and said, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Drink it in remembrance of me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the Lamb of God. You're an awesome God. You're a powerful God. And we thank you, God, for what you've done for us. And Lord, we thank you, God, that you've got us. That Christmas is something very special because of the birth of your child, your son. Lord, in the name of Jesus, help us to hold that true all year round. Let Christmas be all year for us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. Now let's sing together. If you're ready, well, come let us adore him. Let's sing it together, and then we're going to pray and be dismissed. Ready? Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him.